Okay, in this section, I'm going to talk about the um, chemistry of combustion. And I know um, chemistry um, uh, can be a bit tricky. Uh, some people find chemistry a bit hard. And so if you did struggle with it at school, then um, hopefully the method that I present to you in this section will make it a lot clearer. And by the end of this, you should be able to balance um, chemical, chemical equations and also work out the... Um, the ratio of the, the mass of the air and the fuel that you need for perfect combustion. Okay, so um, the chemistry of its combustion in words is, um, so we're talking about, we'll always be talking about hydrocarbons because we're talking about it from a, a power point of view. So it's hydrocarbon plus oxygen, it reacts with the oxygen, that forms carbon dioxide uh, and water, and of course heat, um, which you get, which is um, or used to extract work and uh, generate power from. So if we um, start with methane, um, which is CH4, that's the simplest alkane or hydrocarbon we have. Um, if we react that with um, oxygen, we end up with carbon dioxide and water, so CO2 and H2O. Now, is this equation balanced? Um, and you can think of it in terms of a set of scales. Um, we've got... Um, uh, we can't create or destroy matter. So in terms of the carbons, that's fine. We've got one carbon atom on this side in the methane and one carbon atom on this side in the CO2. But um, it's not balanced because we can see we've got four hydrogens on this side and only two on this side. And the oxygens don't balance either. So this 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 isn't right that we, we, we're creating or destroying matter here. So we need to need to be able to balance this equation. And I'm going to show you a method for doing that. And so if you follow these steps, then hopefully um, it should make it easier. So the way that we do is we always say, assume that we have one unit of our um, fuel. OK, and this is the thing to remember with this. It's, it's all about ratios, whether they're integers or fractions. It doesn't matter. It's all about ratios that we're talking about. So always start off with one unit of your fuel. So we've got one CH2. So you could put one there in brackets if you want to do. And um, what we're going to do is we react that with some oxygen, but we don't know how much, so we're going to say X. Okay, and what that gives us is if we assume complete combustion, we end up with some uh, carbon dioxide, and we don't know how much, so we're going to say Y, and some water, we don't know how much, so we're going to say Z. Then if you construct this table, okay, so on the left-hand side or left-hand column of your table, you've got the reactants. Okay, so these are all going to react together. And what we've got on the right hand side of our table are the products or the product of our combustion, okay, which is carbon dioxide and water. And on the left hand side, what we've got in the simplest form is obviously carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And what we've got on the right hand side is carbon, hydrogen, oxide and oxygen. And we can start filling this out. So on the left hand side, we have in our um, carbon, we've got one carbon. Okay, so we can put a one in there. How many hydrogens have we got? we got four, so we can put that in there. Now, when we say how many oxygens have we got, well, we don't know just yet, but we can express it algebraically. So we've got two um, x times this, so we've got two x oxygens on this side, okay? And if we continue through this table, now if we start writing what we've got on the um, right-hand side, what have we got? So the number of carbons that we've got is um, y, in this instance. And the number of uh, hydrogens we've got, there's none in here, but we've got 2z, okay? And the number of oxygens we've got all together is we've got 2y from the carbon dioxide plus 1z from the water. So we filled out our table, okay? And so we, we don't know what x, y, and z are just yet, but th this, this table balances. So if you look at it now, um, we obviously know that the reactants have to equal the products. So we've now got a series of simultaneous equations. We've got each row of this table is a simultaneous equation. We've got three equations and three unknowns. So we can now solve for this. So we obviously know that um, y is equal to 1. And we know that 2z is equal to 4. Therefore, z is equal to 2. So how many oxygens have we got on this side? Well, we said it's 2y plus z. Therefore, if we substitute that in we calculate we've got um, four oxygens on this side or we should have four oxygens on this side and if we've got four oxygens on this side then we must have four oxygens on this side 
therefore x is equal to 2. And if we plug x, y, and z um, back into our initial um, equation up here, then it balances now. So this is now balanced. So we've got one methane uh, reacts with two oxygen molecules, gives one carbon dioxide and two water molecules, and that's balanced. So hopefully, you know, this you'll agree that um, this is a good way, way to balance the equation. So just remember, so one unit of fuel, we don't know how many oxygen or carbon dioxide or water, so let's give them symbols X, Y, and Z. We have reactants on one side, products on the other side. And if we work through and say how much carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen we've got on each side, they end up with a set of simultaneous equations which we can solve uh, to balance our um, chemical formula. <clears throat> so we've um, balanced it, and that's fine. Um, this is correct as it stands. But the problem is, is that we don't burn uh, fuels in pure oxygen as this equation reacts. Rather, the oxygen is put present in air. And, in fact, air is made up of only 21%, and um, the remainder all just is... OK, there's a few other things um, apart from oxygen and nitrogen. The remainder is mainly made up of nitrogen, so it's normally 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. There are trace elements of other gases, but for this um, analysis, we can neglect them. So assume it's 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So if, therefore one one unit of air is equal to 0.21 units of oxygen and 0.79 units of nitrogen. Or if we divide through by um, 0.21 um, we've got 1 over 0.21 units or moles of air, 1 mole of oxygen and 0.79 over 0.21 moles of nitrogen. Therefore, for every mole of ex oxygen that we want need for our combustion, we have 79 over 20 or 1, or 3.76, if you just want to use an approximation, moles of oxygen. So if we plug that, that into our equation that we got at the top, this is what we end up with. So we end up with 2, which is that 2 there, oxygen. But for every unit of oxygen, we have 79 over 21 units of nitrogen. And obviously, for this to balance, we shouldn't forget about that, and we've got to put the um, the nitrogen on the end there. Okay. Now, you might have noticed that I um, deliberately slipped from units to, to moles, to a term moles here, when I was talking about um, the composition of air. Now, um, and again, it's, it's all to do with ratios. Mole is actually the SI unit of stuff, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. But it doesn't matter what it is. It can be um, units, buckets, tubs. Again, it's all to do with ratios. But mole is the SI unit um, for um, substance. And um, basically comes from Avogadro's uh, law. Um, and remember um, from your um, ideal gas law that the volume of a gas is at a given temperature and pressure proportional to the number of atoms or molecules regardless of the gas. So in other words, moles are equal to volts or volumes. Those two are um, equated. Um, and a mole is the, um, as I said, the SI unit for the amount of substance. And that number is actually expressed by Avogadro's constant. Uh, sorry, Avogadro's um, constant. And one mole is equal to uh, 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. So for every mole, it has that many um, atoms of it. And we'll sort of come back to this um, when we talk about the periodic table. Okay, so we've now um, got our um, chemistry of um, methane nicely balanced. So we're not reacting it with pure, pure oxygen, we're reacting it with... Um, units of air. And that's fine. So this is in terms of moles and, you know, sort of effectively in terms of volume. But in, in terms of our process, uh, the volume of a gas will change with its temperature and pressure, uh, even though the number of moles won't. So it's that's not a convenient... Um, volumes aren't a convenient uh, um, basis for um, combustion measurement. 
it's much more convenient to measure in terms of mass because regardless of the temperature or pressure you're always going to have the same amount of mass so when we're working out the air to fuel ratio we really want to do it on a mass basis rather than a volume basis um, because our volumes can change as i say with temperature and pressure so we need to convert this from volume or moles into mass so how do we do that well the way that we do that is we um, substitute in the atomic masses and this is where the periodic table comes in so this is a periodic table um, for all the elements um, and it's arranged the, the way it's been arranged is um, quite neat in terms of the properties of the individual elements and really we're only going to be using um, three possibly four of these so got hydrogen um, this is the lightest element at the top carbon here and oxygen here and the way to kind of read this and use this um, for uh, the, the chemistry of combustion is the information that's contained in each of the, um, the the elements on the table so I've blown one up here so we can see it so this is for carbon so if we look at it so each cell contains information on the atomic number okay which is the number of protons the atomic symbol its name um, not all of them have that on there but this does and the atomic mass okay so this is the atomic symbol for carbon see um hopefully know that by now that's the atomic number six so saying that each carbon atom has um six protons but crucially then this is a bit that we need for our calculation this is the atomic mass and let's say this is um 12 grams uh 12 if you want to be exact 0 0.011 grams per mole so what that means is um if you took um if you remember six times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms and were to weigh them on a set of scales then they would weigh precisely 12.011 grams okay so this is what, how we can get from moles into mass is by using the atomic mass so if we go back to our um equation so if we pick up all the atomic masses from um, our table so we got carbon is 12 grams per mole hydrogens 1 oxygen 16 nitrogens uh, 14 um, now we want to get the air to fuel ratio okay so we can kind of neglect the um, products at this point we're just looking at the reactants because we all know the ratio of uh, air to fuel or fuel to air in terms of mass so we can write that so we got ch4 um, which is our methane reacts with um, our two units of air so now we can simply substitute the atomic masses into um, this one these ratios here and just a word of caution here um, particularly if you're um, if English isn't your native language this can be a bit confusing so oxygen can be both um, singular and plural so we talk about one oxygen atom um, and we also talk about one or oxygen in its plural sense so this 16 grams per mole um, is per atom so this weighs 32 in total not 16 because there's two of them okay so that's just a word of caution there so we plug them in so it's carbon is 1 times 12 hydrogen is um, four times one then we got two two times 16 so notice here that's two oxygen atoms okay and the same with nitrogen okay and if you do, do the maths and you boil it down then you end up with two numbers divide um, it through by the fuel and we end up with a air to fuel ratio of 17 approximately 17 to 1 so we need around 17 kilograms of air to react perfectly with one kilogram of fuel.